My name is Grace Kuno. I'm Jeff Hearn. I'm Peace Kigua. I'm Rebecca. My, my name is Nomiso Ngobe. I'm Neo Ndlovo. Um, I'm Vimar. My name is Jordana Matlon. Um, my name is Mpumlelo Pagati. I'm a researcher at UNISIS Institute for Social and Health Sciences. Uh, and I'm also a PhD student and my PhD is about women's post-rape experiences, so how they kind of understand and integrate that trauma into, into their lives. I'm currently doing my Master's in Development Studies at Virgin University and my focus, I'm looking at um, the relationship between traditional leaders and elected ward councillors at local government and how does that relationship um, impact um, service delivery. Student at UNISA doing an MA in Theory of Literature. I'm a senior lecturer in psychology at Vet University. I'm a final year student at UNISA in the Department of Psychology and I'm doing a research on LGBTQ, LGBT and their, their experiences in primary healthcare facilities in South Africa. I am an assistant professor at the School of International Service at American University. Uh, I, I study African masculinities um, and the lives and livelihoods of men in the informal economy, specifically in urban contexts. I'm a professor of sociology at the University of Johannesburg. I think what um, differentiates um, men in the ex-colony with those in the empires, I think, is power. Um, um, men in men in men from men from the empires are I mean they hold some form of authority so um, they sort of they set the trend on what it means to be a man right um, I think one of my biggest struggles is buying those men magazines and I read them and I don't see myself. I, I mean, even when another cover person is a black individual, but I still can't identify with the person that who's on this magazine. And um, so, I mean, there is almost this um, trend that um, the men in the post colonies, they are forever catching up. They are, um, they are forever subjective too. So it's, um, we can't, there hasn't been really a culture and a trend to define our own masculinities, right? But we are forever looking up to and aspiring because I mean, that is the masculinity and that is the dominant idea of, of what it means to be a man and therefore we are always playing this catching up game and trying i don't say assimilate but yeah some men are losers and some men are winners right some some people benefit from the system and some people do not and thinking about in my own scholarship beyond this distinction of the the metropole and the colony or the post-colony and, and the former colonizing world to think about racial capitalism as, as I titled my last talk, Beyond Postcolonial Exceptionalism. So one thing that I, I actively do in my scholarship is despite the, the work that I look at, my ethnographic work in Abidjan, I, I draw heavily also from literature on black masculinity in the, the global north, in um, in advanced industrialized economies, and I emphasize the parallels. And in doing so, I emphasize the fact that we have the singular legacy of colonialism and slavery uh, to constitute uh, a project of racial capitalism that, that lasts today. Well, I think if we think about colonization, it positioned white men on the one hand, and black men on the other hand as opposite from each other. So there was the colonizer and the colonized. But at the same time, the colonizers set up a system where black men were offered the position of, of moving out of being colonized if they could conform to sort of white norms and expectations around masculinity. But of course, as we've seen, that is never, I mean, that's a, a false promise in a sense, because um, 
because black men continue to be defined as sort of non-men in, in the kind of current global context. And so there is this, I mean, all men are, are, and also people of other genders and women are sort of to some extent governed by social norms of masculinity. But I think that colonialism sort of positions men in, on different sides of that. So white men, if not are all able to achieve that, they are, um, many more of them have the means to do that. Whereas black men are, by virtue of their blackness, are constructed as sort of non-men. And so even when they do the things that white men do, it, it was always given a different social value. Uh, very simply for me, I think about that kind of relationship in terms of a relationship that someone like Paulo Freire continually came back to when he talked about oppression and resistance. We need to think about who the oppressor is, but we also need to think about the oppressed. And trying to think about men and masculinities in terms of the post-colony and, and men in empire means that we need to bring to mind this idea of relationships and networks of power that have been formed by these different kinds of geographical location. Men in post-colonies are men who have been colonized uh, and men who are trying to come out of that relationship, uh, that entrapment, and have been struggling to come out of that entrapment. Men in empire need to engage a different kind of masculinity that sits with a different kind of hegemony, uh, that is always imbued and intersected with other axes of power in terms of race, class, and so on and so forth. Uh, and, and, and this is very important for how we think about relations of oppression, but also relations of of possible freedoms and resistances. Uh, and, and this continuous separation is very important, but there also needs to be a point where we, we think about how we engage and merge these two different kinds of geographical locations together as well. Well, I think the difference is, is that um, men in the ex-colonies don't have the power to self-define. And the reason why they don't have the, the power to self-define is because um, with coloniality, um, and apartheid in South Africa, um, you know, um, colonialism came with, um, you know, it disrupted processes of, of self-definition. And I think um, <clears throat> to a large extent by, by, by complying with uh, the needs of capitalism, um, um, men in the ex-colonies gave away the power to, re to define themselves. Um, in, in, in the colonies, I see men, um, you know, um, having the power to define themselves, and they also define themselves, um, you know, as the standard, as the norm. And, and what I see is that men in the ex-colonies are in, in constant conversation with that, in, 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 in a, a constant need to be like that. Um, and, and I think that's how... To be to be to house. be men in, in, in the sense that has been defined by men in the um, in the in the in the in the mm. colonizers mm. Um, and and that I think is the center of colonialism is is you want to be like the other. Mm -hmm. um, men in ex colonies have and if you if you would want to to read more have been affected more perhaps by the the interaction with men in the empires, so to speak. So I think it is very important now to, to find the difference between the two, the two, someone said the two gags, you know, sexes or, or, or gender. It is, it is now interesting to find out what are the differences really, especially if you, if you, if you juxtapose the decolonial uh, theories about men and how men can evolve to be better, or even to be more better than women. So, you know, in literature you will find out, because I've been reading Kotsia recently, uh, um, you will find out in, in, in Waiting for Barbarians, for example, a magistrate who has got power, who is able to, to run a, an empire or an outpost, as it were. And now this is a white man, and he takes orders from the empire. And now when this man tries to, to make the locals human, he has got the problem with the empire. And therefore, this man is treated like the, the locals or the, the indigenous people. And that is a problem because if this man 
especially from the empire, does not conform to the forms of the empire. He now becomes an outcast, perhaps a lunatic, as Foucault will, will say. So it is very important now to redefine, perhaps, the relationship between the ex-colony men and the, the men from the empire. It's very, very paramount as we speak.